So I think that curiosity has kept me going, even in difficult moments when I wanted to quit. And there have been those moments. That's networking engineer Rika Shavonen. In addition to the multiple professional and specialist certifications that Rika holds, she has over 12 years of experience in design, implementation, and support. In this episode, Rika sits down with Learning and Certifications Marketing Specialist Steph Garafa to discuss her career journey, the evolution of diversity and inclusion in the networking field, as well as the role that professional networking plays in career growth. Rika starts with her inspirations and why she focused on network engineering. It's been such a pleasure to interview all of these inspiring women so far for International Women's Month. And Rika, thank you so much for hopping on and doing this with us today. I'm so excited to hear everything that you have to say, your perspective, your experience. Let's get started with where did your journey begin? Can you share your journey into the field of networking technologies and what inspired you to focus on network engineering specifically? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. And to talk about my journey into the field of networking, that goes back all the way to my student years at the university when I completed my bachelor's degree. So I completed all the available Cisco Network Academy courses, and that's how I was introduced to networking. And prior to that, I had little knowledge of networking. But the uh, courses were so well planned and well thought that they really sparked my passion for connecting systems. And I became fascinated by the intricacies of how data travels across networks and the critical role it plays in our connected world. And I'm still on that path today. But basically Cisco Network Academy is how I got started. Can you remember the moment you lit up and you fell in love when you were doing the course in Cisco Networking Academy? I think it was probably my first time at the Cisco lab. I believe that was one of the moments that really got me into networking. It's because you got the hands-on experience in the Cisco lab and you actually made computers communicate with each other. That was really cool. Absolutely. And that's changed a lot now, right? With networking changing and evolving into cloud networking. How has that changed your role specifically? Instead of being hands-on, it's more virtual now, right? Oh, absolutely. It's very different nowadays from what it was when I started. And cloud has definitely entered the scene big time. And my role as a network engineer has also changed. And as you kind of pointed out, it's not so much hands-on work anymore, like racking and stacking switches or other networking equipment. It's more managing the devices from a graphical user interface. So that's been kind of an interesting change. Yeah, so if we're thinking about where a lot of network engineers begin their journey with that hands-on learning, the same way that you did, they're looking at this uprise of cloud technologies and they're asking themselves, how do I build these skills? Do I need to build these skills? And so I turn that and I ask you, how are you staying ahead of things like cloud? Well, yes, <laughs> that's a big question. And given the rapid evolution of networking technology, obviously staying updated is crucial. And this is kind of a both a blessing and a curse in our industry. Like on one hand, you're never bored. There's always something to learn. On the other hand, the same statement is a burden in a way. So you always have to learn something new. Absolutely. And you get the analysis paralysis where you go, what do I learn next? There's so many opportunities. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's hard to keep up with all the hot trends that are happening in our industry. So I guess you kind of have to pick a lane and specialize in something, but at the same time, balance it with the industry needs. Like you don't want to study or spend a lot of time in something irrelevant or something that will maybe soon become outdated. Interesting. I like that point you made about staying ahead of industry trends. If you were to say that to somebody, what actionable advice, the way to stay ahead is to, would you say news articles or turning to 
peers maybe? How do you personally and how would you provide advice to someone looking to stay ahead? I personally use a varied approach, like including regular studies in different forms or participating actively in online forums and communities and occasionally attending conferences, webinars, workshops, or even instructor-led courses. So those are some of the ways that I stay ahead and build up my skills. I hope it's okay for me saying this, but your position in the Cisco learning community, it has such a profound impact on learners. Being a Cisco VIP, I saw last year at Cisco Live, you passed your exam. It wasn't even your first time. I think you took one of the CCNP Enterprise exams on site and you passed it, no prep or anything. Is that right? Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> that was a lucky stroke in a way, I feel like. You're so modest. I did some preparation, but I didn't expect to pass, to be honest, but I guess I've done the foundational work so well that it carried me through the exam. It's proof that you've kept your skills current and you're not just learning to pass the exam, you're keeping those skills active to the point where you can go in and test with far less prep than someone who really doesn't keep up with those technologies. Where I'm going with this is we have this community that's looking to you and saying, well, she's telling me to do this and she's passing this exam at Cisco Live, how can I keep my skills so current that I can pass with minimal prep? Speaking purely from a perspective of having those skills and having passed the exam, then going again and testing the same exam a few years later and passing again. Now, since it's International Women's Month, let's think about how that looks to a woman who's trying to make her way in tech. So a lot of the time we listen to our peers more so than we listen to someone on TV who's telling us the news. Those people have such a pull. They draw us to something that might spark a new passion in our life. Yeah, I, I hope I can be an inspiration to other women and girls in tech or people in general. So I hope I can set a good example for anyone wanting to pursue a career in tech or specifically networking. So when you were first starting out, when you were first learning, did you ever feel like you were the only woman in the room? Oh, absolutely. And I still feel like that today even. Sad to say that to be honest, but if I go back all the way to the university days, there were only four women in my class out of around 40 or 50 students. So we were definitely a minority, a small percentage of people in our class. And this is a reality even in today's workplace. So often I am the only woman in the room, especially when it comes to technical stuff. I mean, there may be projects where there are other women involved, but often in the technical discussions, I'm the only woman. I wonder why that is. Do you think there's anything that universities and schools can do to encourage more women to pursue technology? It's a difficult and multifaceted issue, in my opinion. I'm not sure how we could get more representation and more women to join tech. And that's actually one part of the whole picture. The other part and the other problem or big question is how do we get them to stay, which is a whole nother conversation. What's kept you in technology? I mean, you're a woman and you've stuck with it for a number of years now. So what makes you stay? Uh, that's a good question. I haven't thought about that at a deep level actually, so I need to do some self-reflection here. I think I'm inclined towards like science-related topics and computers interest me, and specifically networking, as I mentioned previously, you know, connecting systems, like how does that work? So there's just so much to it, and it's so fascinating. So I think that curiosity has kept me going even in difficult moments when I wanted to quit and there have been those moments not even so long ago but 
I think at the core, it's the curiosity that keeps me networking and somehow like maintains my interest. Yeah, so your love and curiosity for learning more and growing in technology, it'll outweigh any of the social factors or challenges you face, whether it's a woman or otherwise. I'd say yes. And there are constantly new things that come up. That's another thing that I mentioned earlier that there's always something to learn, you know, exciting stuff pops up. So that also sparks my interest again. You know, there's something new and shiny to look at and explore. <laughs> I'm with you. I completely get that. Rika, can you think of somebody in tech who has inspired your journey and why that is? Yes, a few women that have inspired me throughout my career. And I'm sure there are more than the names I'm going to mention, but those are the ones that come to mind right away. So from Cisco, of course, Denise Fishburne and Denise Donahue have been an inspiration to me. For those of you who haven't heard the names of those two women Rika mentioned, Denise Fishburne is a technical solutions architect at Cisco who holds multiple certifications and is a frequent speaker at Cisco Live and Networkers. And Denise Donahue is a tech veteran, holder of multiple certifications, and has written 12 books for Cisco Press over the last 20 years. Both women are titans in the tech industry, and we highly recommend learning more about their work and careers. I mean, they both have long, amazing careers. They've been in the industry for so long. They've paved the way for other women, you know, after them. So I really look up to those two fantastic women. And then one other name that comes to mind is Radia Perlman. Of course, we know her from creating a spanning tree protocol. She's the brilliant mind behind it. So I always thought that that was very interesting. Or she's a fascinating person. I've watched some of her tech seminars that are available on YouTube. And it's just so interesting to hear her perspectives on different things about technology and everything. Absolutely. I'm always fascinated when, especially women, when you take to a stage and you're speaking and you focus so much on what you're talking about and you're so passionate about it that you become so much more confident because it's not about how you appear. No, I totally agree. Yeah, I'm saying that because I get stage fright. So things like this, if we were doing it live, I would be extremely nervous because I always want to make sure I'm sounding clear and I'm making sense. You know, I just want to show the best version of myself. And when I think Think about the fact that when people are listening or watching, they don't care about me. They care about what I'm talking about. And if I can help somebody and give them information that will empower them to grow in whatever way that might be, it distracts me from my own uh, my stage fright. Let's talk about professional networking. So we spoke about how you've been inspired in your career by other women. Can you discuss the importance of building a professional network within the tech community and share some experiences where networking has significantly impacted your career, especially in terms of keeping pace with tech changes? Yes, absolutely. So first of all, building a professional network in the tech community is invaluable. So people networking has played a central role in my career progression, connecting me with peers and mentors. Through networking events and conferences, I've been able to connect with these people in person and even gained lifelong friends. And collaborating with professionals in my network has not only expanded my knowledge, but has also opened doors to new opportunities and career advancements. Now, as an example of this, many of the roles I've been hired for were referenced to me through my connections, or maybe I initiated the first contact and got my foot in the door because I knew someone at the company. And you know, I have mixed feelings about the whole game of recruitment and hiring because where's the line between the power of networking and the unfairness of favoritism? You know what I mean? So am I the best candidate for the role or do I just know the right people? So 
Anyway, like it or not, it's an important part of career development, having the right network and knowing the right people. And besides career advancement and maybe more job opportunities being available, having a strong network of experts around you really accelerates learning and in a way boosts your capabilities. Like it's almost like a power up when you know skilled experts. And then having access to these skilled experts solves problems way faster than a search engine. So it really helps with your job and everything. You just got my brain going a million miles an hour, Rika, because you just said asking a person is better than a search engine. Well, how do you feel about AI? That's a good question. AI scares me a little bit, to be honest. Seeing Me too. <laughs> yeah, seeing what it's already <laughs> capable of doing. You know, the good and the bad. So I don't know. I'd like to say that it's no match for real experts. At least right now, I believe it's still in its infancy. But I don't know. I guess the sky's the limit where we can go with AI. So going back to building a professional network, if I came to you and said, Rika, I'm, I'm just starting out in tech. Where do I go to build a community? Or how do I join a community? Where would you point me? And how do you stay connected? Well, I'm glad that you asked that question. And a little promotion here maybe, but of course the Cisco Learning Network is a great place to connect with industry professionals. As Rika just mentioned, the Cisco Learning Network is a great place to start to get connected to a community. Please visit learningnetwork.cisco.com to create a profile and start connecting with others who are on their own certification journeys. And many of us also hang out on social media, I guess mainly on Twitter or X as it's called nowadays. So I would start with those resources. I have one last question before I think we can wrap this up, Rika. So Rika, if you could travel back in time 10, 15 years to the beginning of your career journey, What's the advice that you would give yourself now that you maybe wish you would have had back then? Okay, just speaking from my heart and intuition, I guess, I'd want to say to myself that you belong. You belong in this space, you belong in this industry. I would wish that my younger self had more confidence and would be more able to be herself not have to minimize or shrink herself, perhaps not absorb poor behavior from others as much as she did. So I used to think that I had to be like the best at what I do to like earn my space or my position in the networking community. But you know, there are other ways and People have unique skills and they bring value in different ways. So I wish I had maybe utilized my own strengths more than trying to fit some mold that I had in my mind. That's it for our interview with Rika. If you'd like to hear more of this series, from others about their experiences in the tech industry, and about updates to the evolving world of Cisco certifications, please subscribe to the Cisco Learning Network podcast. And be sure to visit the Cisco Learning Network, as I mentioned before, at learningnetwork.cisco.com to find all kinds of resources like exam topics, training videos, and an entire community of others who can help you on your learning journey. Thanks for listening.